Oh, trust in God. A lot of folks are still dealing with this tithe thing. You still having trouble with it. You got questions about tithe. I want you to know something, though, that you don't have questions about nothing else. <laughs> you, you understand God blessing you. You don't have no questions about that. You don't have no questions about God's grace. You don't have no questions about God giving you a job to go to. You, you don't have no questions about him putting food on your table. I never hear nobody asking questions at breakfast time. Just none, just none of the eating going on. And when the biscuits are ready in the oven, ain't no question going on then. You don't have any questions about God blessing you. Why would you have a question about you blessing him? Amen. Amen. You can add, can't you? You can divide, can't you? Then you understand what the tithe means. The tithe is a symbol of what God has already given you. Because tithing is about trusting God. Notice. He ties in verse 20, verse 21, and I'm joking. Nasty shows up. Look at night, verse 21. He says, King of Sodom. He, he shows up. And King of Sodom, King of Nasty says, Look, if you give me the people, I'll give you all of the loot. Are you praying with me? Everything that you got in rescuing them and rescuing their resources, just give me the people, and I will give you everything else. Are you praying with me? It's right there in the text. But he said, No. Abraham said, no, I want you to give me nothing. Because I don't want the king of nasty saying that he gave me anything. Amen. Y'all gonna let me preach this? Because, because I've already said yes to the king of kings. I gotta say no to the king of nasty. You get that on the way home. Amen. Amen. Because I've already raised my hand to God. I can't take nothing from the king of nasty. Yes, sir. Amen. Because there are some nasty things going on among the people who have already raised their hands to the king of kings. But what I want you to know is, is that if you say yes to the king of kings, you've got to say no to the king of nasty. Amen. You don't want nothing from the king, from the king of nastiness. Because, because the king of nastiness will always bring you further than you want to go. And make you stay longer than you want to stay. And make you pay more than you want to pay. Are you praying with me? Because the king of nasty, whatever his deal is, is always with a hook on it. <laughs> I wish I had a hey man, I, 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 I see I'm losing you. Let me give you an illustration. That they, when, I, when I was younger, we used to go fishing. And when we fished, we only had, before we had all of this new stuff, uh oh, uh, uh, Brother Nelson, before we got all these lures and all this other stuff, before we had a rod and reel, we had a cane pole. A line and a hook. Oh, y'all don't pray with me? We had a worm that with some wiggle in it. And we put that worm with the wiggle on it, on the hook. And we dropped the hook and the line in the water. And when, and, 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 when, and when the worm got in the water and started to wiggle, come on, somebody. The fish. Since the wiggle and the waves. I wish I had a wiggle. And what happens in the fish, there was something stirred up in the fish that he couldn't watch a worm wiggle like that without having to try to internalize it. He couldn't watch that wiggle long before he had to try to internalize the worm. And so eventually he had to try to internalize the worm. And what came with the worm was nothing but a hook. Then we could pull him out of the environment that the God that created him placed to be. Can I help y'all with this? Can I unpack this illustration? I mean, that's how it is with the king of nasty. He knows what kind of wiggle you like. And he'll put that wiggle in front of you. And, and, and the wiggle in front of you stirs up something on the inside of you. And sooner or later, you got to try to internalize the wiggle off of the worm. But when you get the worm, you also got his hook. And he will prove will do. But if you say yes to the king of kings, you got to say no to the worm in the wind. You got to say no to the king of nasty. I got to get out of here. Let me leave this last thing with you. Not only not only did not only did faith do those things for him, faith also changed his outlook. It changed his outlook for the better. I'm almost done. It changed his outlook for the better. Look 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 in, look in, in chapter 15. In chapter 15, the Bible says that Abram begins to talk to God. 
And he tells God, he says, God, I got all of the stuff you gave me. All of these things you blessed me with. I got, I've got, I've got servants and I've got, I've got um, uh, livestock and cattle and all of this thing. But I have nobody to leave this stuff to. God, you promised me. You were going to leave me an heir. You were going to leave me a son so that I could pass this stuff on to you. Right now, all I got is a servant by the name of Eliezer. He's the only person that I'm going to leave this to. Lord, I'm almost 100 years old. I'm almost past. I'm past right now the ability to make a baby, and you still haven't given me a baby. Are you present? But the Bible says that God changed his outlook because of his faith in God. He says, step outside the tent, Abram. It's nighttime. I want you to step out. And when he stepped out, the Bible says, God says, look up in the nighttime sky. And the Bible says he looked up. He said, you see the stars up there. And Abram said, Lord, I see the stars. And he said, number the stars. He said, Lord, I can't number all of those stars. And then the Bible says, God said, just like you can't number the stars. He said, the promise that I made to you that I'd make you a great nation, that's how your descendants are going to be. He said, look up. You're going to get this on the way home. He said, don't keep looking down about why you are in the ground, down in the dumps, and all the problems and troubles, and that you're too old, and, and that they said you'll never be able to get an heir. Don't you look at the problems, and don't you keep looking down at the finances, and down at the family issues, and down at the trouble in your home, down at the, at the issues on your child. Don't you keep looking down. You need to look up. Come on, somebody. that God has brought in your life that you once were lost 
<laughs> but now you found that you once were wretched, but now you're holy. That you once were nasty, but now you've been living from your nastiness. Come on, somebody. Not because you did better, but because you trusted in the one who is able to keep you, who's able to save you, who's able to fulfill his promise. And I want you to know that because of our faith in him, we are now considered to be righteous with God. Let me tell you something. Without faith, you can't get into heaven. Without faith, you can't get back to Jesus. Come on, somebody. Jesus will never come to receive you into his family. God will never accept you in heaven without faith. And because we have trusted in him, because we have put our faith in him, we have an eternal life and eternal relationship with God the Father through his son, Jesus Christ. If you're here, will you stand with me? There may be somebody here. There might be somebody here today. You have never professed openly a faith in Jesus Christ. So your outlook has remained down in the dumps. But I want you to know that God is able. If you would just look up, the Bible says that if we will look up, that the one who is promised to come will eventually come. The Bible says that he brings with him eternal life and eternal rewards of those who have put their faith and their trust in him. If you are here, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, we invite you to come today and to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior over your life. If you're here, you want to be blessed beyond physical blessings. You want something that's going to last throughout eternity. I'm telling you, the only thing that you can take with you into eternity is a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have Jesus, you have everything you need. If you're here, will you come? Will you come today? Candidate for baptism by Christian experience of our letter. You've never made an open profession of faith in Christ. Today is your day. This is the time. This is the appointed hour. This is the appointed time. Accept Jesus Christ while you still have a chance. Will you come? Is there one today? If you have accepted Christ, you've been baptized, but you haven't. You're not a part of a local church. We invite you to be a part of Pleasant Green. Will you come today? Is there one? Will you come? God bless you. God bless you.